Greetings folks, in this video I'll go through the setup of my WL Toys uh, 10428 1 10th scale buggy to work with iNav in rover mode. So what do we have to do to get it going? Well we need a flight control board, I have a Matek F405 wing on there which is overkill of course but uh, the 405 wing can take ArduPilot as well. Uh, and I am aware, of course, that ArduPilot has been doing Rover for uh, a long, long time and is probably way better than iNav is at the moment. Uh, but I don't know ArduPilot at all, so I'm sticking with iNav for the moment. We also need a GPS with a compass. This is a Betian BN880. And you do need to set up the compass and calibrate it correctly, which is something new that I had to learn. FPV is optional. You don't really need that, but... Uh, I have it got. I have it on here. I have an X4R receiver there, but any receiver will do. Any sort of S bus receiver. Uh, now to get this ready, I wanted to use my Tyrannus radio so that I could program it up the way I wanted for INF. So I had to pull out the ESC and receiver, which is sort of an all-in-one unit with this with this buggy. Um, and replace the ESC, and it's a brushed motor, so we need a brushed ESC. And that's just a Turnergy 20 amp brushed ESC. Uh, and uh, the receiver. And then I had to also replace the steering servo uh, because it had some odd connection that went into the integrated ESC and receiver, um, and I couldn't work out how to get it going with with this board. So. So I swapped it for another uh, servo. It's a standard size servo. This one uh, is a pretty good quality digital one, I think. But anyway, it fitted easily, so uh, that wasn't too much hassle. It, this one also comes with a, a gear changing servo, which stripped out very early on when I had first got the buggy. So I, I've just got it locked in one gear at the moment. So that's all there is. All you have is throttle and a steering servo, really. One thing, you want to have the uh, GPS and compass away from any noisy or metallic areas. I've got it up on this little mast. That's just heat bent PVC plastic. I'm running it on a 2S2200. It only draws like five amps when it's cruising along, so uh, you don't need any special batteries or anything like that. Normal INAV set up in your transmitter. Uh, you do need aileron and elevator set up if you're going to use uh, stick commands later on, which you really do for way, uh, loading the waypoint mission and uh, calibrating the compass. So yeah, normal first four channels, then a couple of uh, an arming switch, uh, a waypoint switch, and a return to home switch. All right, we'll connect. Uh, look at calibration. You need to do your normal accelerometer calibration. You won't be able to calibrate the compass at this stage until you set it up uh, in the, what is it, the configuration page, I think. Mixer, choose Rover, Rover, and you'll get a motor and a servo. That's all you need to do there. Outputs, if the uh, steering is going in the wrong direction, you may need to reverse it here. Presets, don't need presets. Ports, uh, you tell it where you're connecting your receiver and GPS configuration and here we need to tell it which magnetometer we're using it will probably be set as none but if you're using the BTN 880 BN 880 then the HMC 5883 is the correct magnetometer and the way I have it mounted uh, with the uh, wires coming in from the back of the GPS unit the way it's mounted you have to choose magnetometer alignment of CW 720 flip don't ask me why, that's the way you have to do it, so that the uh, north is facing north, basically. I also selected stop motors on low throttle, enable motor and servo output, OSD, and that's all good, save and reboot that. Fail safe, return to home, PID tuning, there was nothing I did here. Advanced tuning, I don't think a lot of these settings relate to the rover. I did change minimum throttle and max throttle from to their maximum and minimums, 1000 and 2000 as per Pavel's suggestion. Uh, land after return to home. I don't know if that actually is relevant. 
loiter radius. You don't really loiter with a rover, I don't think. So that was all of it there. No programming, receiver. You do have to make sure your graphs here go to the right when you move the sticks up and right. And this is where you tell it which sort of receiver you have. Modes. I have an arm switch, a return to home switch, and an activate waypoint mission switch, and that's all. GPS, nothing to do there, and uh, mission control. This is where you can set up a mission. I think if you have internet connection or something like that, or there's a mission loaded, you'll actually get a map in this area here, but uh, on this MacBook, it's not showing up for some reason. It does show up on my, on my Mac inside. And you can place waypoints. You can uh, edit each waypoint and tell uh, the, the speed to go around that waypoint. Then you can save the file onto your desktop. You can save the mission to the flight controller, but it's still not active. You also have to load the EEPROM mission, and uh, that's what the uh, stick commands are all about. That I'll show you in a minute. OSD, I do have uh, the heading set up here and the heading graph as well, just to check that your compass is aligned correctly and, and set up properly. And that's about it, really. You have to learn a few stick commands and load the waypoint mission that's loaded onto your flight controller onto your EEPROM so it will actually activate it. It's uh, throttle down and uh, right stick up and to the right. And that should make your uh, waypoint mission ready to ready to activate by activating your waypoint mission switch. And calibrate compass is sort of the opposite to that. So it's the right stick down and the uh, throttle rudder up and to the right. So once you've initiated the calibrate compass using your stick commands, you hold it like this and rotate around a few times. You can all make you quite dizzy. Hold it like this, rotate around for the pitch. Do that a few times, then hold it vertical and rotate around. Maybe go the other way so you don't fall over. And then you've got 30 seconds just to sort of rotate it around all axes like that. And after 30 seconds, it should be done. You won't get any indication that it's finished. You just have to kind of trust it. So to activate a waypoint mission, first of all, you have to create the mission using Mission Planner. Then you have to load it onto the flight control board. Then you have to load it onto the EEPROM by doing your stick commands like that. And then you flick it into waypoint mission mode and it'll take off by itself and complete the mission. What it does at the end of the mission, I'm not absolutely sure yet. Mine was coming back and sort of slowly circling around the home point. Possibly if I select land at the end of the mission, when I create the mission, it might come back and stop. But but I'll check that on my next rover expedition.